Elizabeth Short, also known as the Black Dahlia, had an intriguing yet tragically short career. Born on July 29, 1924, in Hyde Park, Massachusetts, Elizabeth had dreams of becoming an actress and making it big in Hollywood. During her brief time in Los Angeles, Elizabeth worked odd jobs to support herself while pursuing her acting aspirations. She was known to frequent bars and nightclubs, hoping to catch the attention of casting agents or influential individuals who could help launch her career. Unfortunately, Elizabeth's dreams were cut short when she was brutally murdered at the age of 22 in January 1947. The Black Dahlia murder case has captivated the public's attention for decades, and it remains one of the most notorious unsolved crimes in history. At the center of this chilling mystery is Elizabeth Short, an aspiring actress whose life was tragically cut short. Elizabeth's body was discovered in a park in a Los Angeles neighborhood, severed at the waist and drained of blood. The gruesome nature of her murder shocked the nation and sparked widespread media coverage. Since then, the Black Dahlia case has become a haunting inspiration for numerous books, movies, and TV adaptations. While the identity of Elizabeth's killer remains unknown, her story continues to intrigue both true crime enthusiasts and those fascinated by Hollywood's dark underbelly. Jam Master Jay. Known as one of the pioneers in the world of hip hop, he made a significant impact on the music industry. Jam Master Jay, whose real name was Jason William Mazell, rose to fame as a member of the legendary rap group Run DMC. As their DJ and producer, he played a crucial role in shaping their distinctive sound and style. His innovative turntable skills and ability to blend different genres set him apart from other DJs of his time. But tragically, his life was cut short. If you're a fan of Run DMC, you might remember the name Jam Master J. Unfortunately, his life was tragically cut short in 2002 when he was shot in a recording studio in Jamaica. In a recent development, two individuals named Ronald Washington and Carl Jordan Jr. were indicted for his murder in 2020. It is believed that the motive behind this heinous act was retaliation for a drug deal gone wrong. Lana Clarkson had a fascinating career that spanned both the entertainment industry and the world of fashion. In the early 1980s, Lana Clarkson landed bit parts in film and television. She made her screen debut as a minor character in Fast Times at Ridgemont High, 1982. Director Amy Heckerling's coming-of-age comedy, she played the wife of science teacher Mr. Vargas. But her career took off when she starred in the cult classic film Barbarian Queen, in 1985. Her performance garnered critical acclaim and established her as a rising star in Hollywood. She went on to appear in several other films, showcasing her versatility as an actress. In addition to her acting career, Lana also had success as a fashion model. Her striking looks and confident presence made her a sought-after face for numerous campaigns and magazine covers. Tragically, Lana's promising career was cut short in 2003. On February 3, 2003, a tragic incident occurred involving record producer Phil Spector and actress Lana Clarkson. Clarkson was found dead in Spector's mansion, which sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry. The events leading up to Clarkson's death began earlier that night at the House of Blues in Los Angeles. She met Spector there while working and eventually left with him in his limousine. Once they arrived at Spector's mansion, both of them went inside while the driver remained in the car. However, about an hour later, the driver heard a gunshot coming from inside the house. Shortly after, Spectre emerged from the back door holding a gun. On April 13, 2009, he was found guilty of murdering Clarkson. Spectre was sentenced on May 29, 2009 to 19 years to life in state prison. He died in 2021 while serving his sentence. Yo, let's talk about the career of Pop Smoke. This dude was a rising star in the music industry before his untimely passing. Pop Smoke, whose real name was Bashar Baraka Jackson, burst onto the scene with his unique sound and gritty lyrics. Hailing from Brooklyn, New York, Pop Smoke quickly made a name for himself with his drill music style. He gained widespread recognition with his breakout hit, Welcome to the Party, in 2019, which became an anthem for the New York hip-hop scene. Pop Smoke's career took off from there, 
as he released a string of successful singles and mixtapes. His deep voice and commanding presence on tracks like Dior and Mood Swings solidified him as one of the hottest artists in the game. Unfortunately, tragedy struck in February 2020. It's a tragic incident that shook the music industry. The untimely death of rapper Pop Smoke. He was shot and killed in his rented home in Los Angeles on February 19, 2020, after a group of individuals broke in. The news sent shockwaves through his fans and the entire hip-hop community. The authorities charged four individuals in connection with the murder of Pop Smoke, Corey Walker, Keandre Rogers, and two minors. Claude Vivier, a talented musician and composer, had an intriguing career that spanned a relatively short period of time. Born in 1948 in Canada, Vivier dedicated his life to creating innovative and boundary-pushing music. Tragically, Vivier's promising career was cut short when he was murdered in Paris in 1983 at the age of 34. Despite his untimely death, his impact on contemporary music cannot be understated. His compositions continue to be performed and celebrated around the world, solidifying his legacy as one of Canada's most influential composers. On the evening of Monday, 7th of March, 1983, something happened that would leave many questions unanswered. Vivier, while enjoying a drink at a bar in the Belleville neighborhood, extended an invitation to a young man named Pascal Dolzan. Little did Vivier know that Dolzan had ulterior motives. He intended to rob and murder him. Tragically, Vivier lost his life that night at the hands of Dolzan. This chilling incident serves as a reminder that we can never truly know someone's true intentions. It also highlights the importance of being cautious and aware of our surroundings, even in seemingly harmless situations. Lenny Bro was a legendary jazz guitarist known for his innovative playing style and virtuosic abilities. Born in 1941, he began playing guitar at a young age and quickly developed a unique approach to the instrument. Bro's career took off in the 1960s when he started performing with various jazz ensembles and recording albums. His technical prowess and ability to seamlessly blend different musical genres, such as jazz, country, and classical, set him apart from other guitarists of his time. Sadly, Lenny Bro's life was tragically cut short in 1984 at the age of 43. On August 12, 1984, tragedy struck the music world when Lenny Bro's life came to a sudden and shocking end. His body was discovered in a swimming pool at his apartment complex in Los Angeles, California. The coroner's report revealed that Bro had been strangled, leaving everyone puzzled and searching for answers. During the investigation, suspicion fell on Bro's wife, Jewel. However, despite being the chief suspect in his murder, she was never charged with any crime related to his death. The circumstances surrounding Lenny Bro's untimely demise remain a mystery to this day. Jockey Byard had a remarkable and diverse career in the world of jazz music. Known for his exceptional skills as a pianist, composer, and arranger, his ability to incorporate elements of stride piano, bebop, and even classical music into his performances made him a truly unique artist. Bayard's career was punctuated by collaborations with some of the biggest names in jazz. He worked alongside legends such as Charles Mingus, Rassan Roland Kirk, and Eric Dolphy, contributing his distinctive sound to their recordings and live performances. On February 11, 1999, tragedy struck in Hollis, Queens, New York City when Bayard was fatally shot in his own home. The police investigation revealed that there were no signs of robbery, forced entry, or a struggle. Additionally, no weapon was found at the scene. This puzzling case was soon declared a homicide. However, the circumstances surrounding Bayard's death remain unclear, and the case remains unsolved to this day. Suzanne Tamam had a remarkable career in the music industry. Born on January 23, 1977, in Beirut, Lebanon, she rose to fame as a talented singer and actress. Tamim's career took off when she won the top prize on the popular talent show, Studio El Fan, in 1996. This victory opened doors for her in the music industry, leading to the release of multiple successful albums and hit singles. In addition to her musical achievements, Suzanne Tamim also ventured into acting. 
She starred in several Egyptian films and TV series, but Suzanne Tamim's promising career was tragically cut short in July 2008 at the age of 31. On July 28, 2008, tragedy struck when Suzanne Tamim was found brutally murdered in her apartment in Dubai. The shocking incident sent shockwaves through the world, leaving many questions unanswered. The investigation led to the arrest of an Egyptian businessman named Hisham Talat Mustafa. However, the reasons behind his involvement in arranging Suzanne Tamim's murder remain unknown. The case garnered significant media attention and sparked public curiosity about the circumstances surrounding Suzanne Tamim's untimely death. Despite the passage of time, it continues to be a haunting mystery that captivates people's interest. Randy Walker, also known as Stretch, was a prominent American rapper and record producer. He gained recognition for his work with the rap group Live Squad and later joined Shakur's renowned rap group, Thug Life, in the early 1990s. Unfortunately, tragedy struck on November 30, 1994, when Shakur was shot. This incident led to the dissolution of Thug Life and had a significant impact on Randy Walker's career. Shortly after, tragedy would also strike Stretch. On November 30, 1995, tragedy struck as Stretch met a devastating fate. After leaving a late night recording session and dropping off his own brother Majesty at his Queens Village home, Stretch found himself on his way to a Biggie Smalls event. However, this night took an unexpected turn when two or three men in a black car pulled up beside Stretch's vehicle and began firing from a rolled down window. The events that unfolded next were nothing short of horrifying. In the face of danger and with adrenaline pumping through his veins, Stretch attempted to escape the assailants in pursuit. Sadly, just after 12.30 a.m. that fateful night, tragedy struck as he crashed his vehicle. The aftermath revealed the grim reality of what had transpired. Stretch was found lifeless with four bullets in his back. Patrick Hawkins, also known as Fat Pat, was a highly talented American rapper hailing from Houston, Texas. He made a significant impact on the hip-hop scene as a member of the Dead End Alliance, DEA. Rec Shop Records played a pivotal role in introducing Fat Pat's unique style to the world. In 1998, they released his first two albums, Ghetto Dreams and Throwed Into Game, but his life was cut short. On February 3, 1998, tragedy struck the music industry when Fat Pat, a rising star in the rap scene, was fatally shot in Houston, Texas. The incident occurred when he went to a promoter's apartment to collect an appearance fee. Unfortunately, the promoter was not home at the time, and Fat Pat was shot in the corridor outside the apartment. At just 27 years old, his life was cut short. To this day, Fat Pat's murder remains unsolved. Eight years later, his brother, rapper Big Hawk, was also shot to death by an unknown assailant. Mia Zapata was a talented musician and vocalist who made a significant impact on the punk rock scene in the 1990s. Born in 1965, Mia grew up with a passion for music and began performing at local venues in her hometown of Louisville, Kentucky. In the late 1980s, Mia moved to Seattle, Washington, where she became a founding member of the influential punk band, The Gits. Known for her powerful vocals and raw energy on stage, Mia quickly gained recognition within the underground music community. The Gits released their debut album, Frenching the Bully, in 1992 which showcased Mia's dynamic songwriting abilities and unique vocal style. The band's music blended elements of punk rock with hints of blues and soul influences, creating a sound that resonated with fans across genres. Tragically, Mia's promising career was cut short when she was brutally murdered in 1993. Mia Zapata, a talented and promising singer, tragically lost her life on July the 7th, 1993, at the young age of 27. Her untimely death shocked the music world and left many wondering who could commit such a heinous act. Mia was returning home after spending time at a music venue when she was brutally beaten and strangled to death. The circumstances surrounding her murder were shrouded in mystery, leaving investigators and loved ones desperate for answers. For years, the identity of Mia's killer remained unknown. 
It wasn't until a decade later that justice was finally served. Jesus Mesquia was found guilty of her murder and sentenced to 36 years in prison. This long-awaited resolution brought some closure to Mia's family, friends, and fans who had mourned her loss for years. Cornell Gunner was a talented American singer and songwriter, best known for his work as a member of the Coasters. Born on November 14, 1936 in Los Angeles, California, Gunner had a passion for music from an early age. Gunner's career took off when he joined the Coasters in the late 1950s. As part of the group, he contributed to several chart-topping hits, including Yakety Yak, Charlie Brown, and Poison Ivy. His smooth vocals and charismatic stage presence made him a standout performer. Cornell Gunter's life was cut short on February 26, 1990. Cornell Gunter, the talented American rhythm and blues singer and member of the iconic band The Coasters, tragically met his untimely end on February 26, 1990. While driving in Nevada, a gunshot pierced through his car's windshield, claiming his life. Even after all these years, the mystery surrounding Cornell Gunter's murder remains unsolved, leaving fans and investigators alike searching for answers. Let's dive into the shocking and tragic story surrounding Tunisian singer Thikra. Known for her mesmerizing vocals and captivating performances, Thikra had a successful career touring across various countries. However, on November 28, 2003, a horrifying incident unfolded that shook the music industry and left everyone in disbelief. On a fateful day before her untimely death, she found herself in Libya with her entourage giving a memorable concert. Little did she know that this would be her last performance. During that same night, she fearlessly used her voice to criticize the corruption within the Saudi government through one of her songs. Tragically, the following day on November 28, 2003, she was brutally murdered. The shocking details emerged after an autopsy was conducted by a team of doctors. The medical report was shocking. She had been shot 26 times. The violence didn't spare those closest to her either. Her secretary suffered from 22 gunshot wounds while her business manager received 18 bullets. Even more chillingly, her husband endured three bullets to the mouth. This heartbreaking incident serves as a reminder of the danger some artists face when they use their platform to speak out against injustice. It is a tragic loss that continues to raise questions and demand justice for those involved in this heinous act of violence. Maurizio Gucci, a name that is synonymous with luxury and fashion. Maurizio Gucci, the grandson of Gucci o Gucci, played a crucial role in shaping the iconic Gucci brand. Maurizio took over as the head of Gucci in 1983 after a series of family disputes and legal battles. Under his leadership, he sought to revitalize and modernize the brand. He introduced new designs and expanded into different product lines, including ready-to-wear clothing and accessories. During his tenure, Maurizio also focused on expanding Gucci's global presence by opening stores in major fashion capitals around the world. His strategic approach helped elevate Gucci's status as one of the leading luxury brands globally. However, despite his efforts to revive and grow the company, Maurizio faced challenges both internally and externally. Internal conflicts within the family continued to plague him throughout his career. Additionally, financial difficulties led to a decline in sales and profitability for Gucci. In 1995, Maurizio was forced to sell his stake in Gucci due to mounting debts and disagreements with other shareholders. Shortly thereafter, his life was tragically ended. Back in 1995, a shocking event unfolded in the world of fashion. Maurizio Gucci, the renowned fashion mogul, was tragically shot by a hired hitman right outside his office. The person behind this heinous act none other than his former wife, Patrizia Reggiani. According to prosecutors, Reggiani's motives for orchestrating this crime were a complex mix of jealousy, money, and resentment towards her ex-husband. Reggiani faced the consequences of her actions and was convicted in 1998. She spent a staggering 18 years behind bars before finally being released in October 2016. Barbara Daly Bakeland, a young woman living in the vibrant city of New York, carved out a prominent place for herself as a socialite. 
Her beauty and charm caught the attention of many, leading her to become a sought-after muse for painters and even gracing the pages of renowned fashion magazines like Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. She was also the ex-wife of Brooks Bakeland, who was the grandson of Leo Bakeland, the inventor of Bakelite plastic. But Barbara's life would come to an end at the hand of her own son. On November 17, 1972, Barbara was stabbed by her son, Antony, after an argument, killing her almost instantly. She was 51 years of age at the time, and her son, Antony, was 26. Police arrived and found Antony at the scene of the crime. He later confessed to, and was charged with, her murder. Antony served no jail time and was institutionalized at Broadmoor Hospital until July 21st, 1980. He was then released. All right, let's dive into the world of Terry Knight, a multi-talented figure in the rock and roll scene. Terry Knight wore many hats. He was a music producer, promoter, singer, songwriter, and even a radio personality. While he may not have achieved massive success as a singer himself, his true triumphs came from his work behind the scenes. One of his notable achievements was being the original manager producer for Grand Funk Railroad. Under his guidance, this iconic rock band reached new heights and became one of the most influential groups of their time. Terry Knight's ability to recognize talent and nurture it played a significant role in their success. On November 1st, 2004, Terry Knight was murdered at the age of 61. He was stabbed multiple times by his teenage daughter's boyfriend, Donald Fair, after Knight attempted to intercede in an argument between his daughter and the boyfriend. Donald Fair was sentenced on May 26, 2005 to life in prison. Let's take a look at the career of Chris Bender, an American singer who made waves in the music industry back in 1991. His album titled Draped caught the attention of listeners nationwide and even landed on the national music charts. Tragically, Chris Bender's promising career was cut short. On November 3rd, 1991, at 2.17 a.m., Bender was shot and killed in Brockton while sitting in his blue Mercedes-Benz outside of the Crescent Court housing project where his mother lived. Bender was sitting in the driver's seat of the car. His 17-year-old cousin, Jesse Starks, was sitting in the passenger seat. When three hooded men approached and fired 21 gunshots at the vehicle, Bender used his body to shield Starks from the gunshots. Starks was unharmed, but Bender was struck four times in the back of his torso and once in his elbow. He later died from his wounds in the hospital. Let's dive into the incredible career of Hying S. Noor, a remarkable figure in the entertainment industry. Hying S. Noor was not only an actor, but also a doctor and a survivor of the Cambodian genocide. Born in Cambodia, Ngor experienced firsthand the atrocities committed by the Khmer Rouge regime Despite facing unimaginable hardships, he managed to escape and eventually found refuge in the United States. Ngor's acting career began when he was cast as Dith Pran, a journalist and his real-life friend in the critically acclaimed film The Killing Fields. His powerful performance earned him an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor, making him the first Asian actor to win this prestigious award. On February 25, 1996, Ngor was shot dead outside his home in Chinatown in downtown Los Angeles, California. Charged with the murder were three reputed members of the Oriental Lazy Boys street gang who had prior arrests for snatching purses and jewelry. At trial, it was learned that they killed Ngor because, after handing over his gold Rolex watch willingly, he refused to give them a locket that contained a photo of his deceased wife. They were sentenced to life in prison. Rapper Jimmy Wopo. Known for his unique style and raw lyrics, Jimmy Wopo made a significant impact on the hip hop scene. Hailing from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Jimmy Wopo began his journey in music at a young age. He gained recognition with his breakout single, Elm Street, which showcased his gritty storytelling and captivating flow. The song quickly became an anthem for many and solidified his place in the rap game. Unfortunately, Tragedy struck in 2018 at the age of 21. At 4.22 p.m. EDT on June 18, 2018, 
Wopo and a male passenger were shot in Pittsburgh's Hill District neighborhood. The passenger survived, but Wopo, who was shot in the head, died after being rushed to the UPMC Presbyterian at 5.56 p.m. He was 21 years old and left behind three children. As of 2023, no one has been charged for the murder. Nicole Brown Simpson, known for her tragic personal life, also had a successful career of her own. While she may be primarily remembered as the ex-wife of O.J. Simpson, Nicole had achievements and aspirations that extended beyond her high-profile marriage. Nicole Brown Simpson worked as a waitress at a Beverly Hills nightclub called The Daisy before she met O.J. Simpson. However, after their marriage, she focused on being a homemaker and raising their two children. Despite her shift in priorities, Nicole remained passionate about fitness and health. She eventually pursued a career in the industry and opened her own fitness studio called The Body in 1993. The studio aimed to empower women through exercise and healthy living. Nicole Brown Simpson's murder shook the nation and became a widely publicized case due to her marriage to O.J. Simpson, a well-known figure in the world of sports and entertainment. The tragic event unfolded when Nicole and her friend Ron Goldman were found murdered outside her own home in California. The subsequent criminal trial that followed was nothing short of controversial, capturing the attention of media outlets and the public alike. Evidence linking O.J. Simpson to the murders was presented, leading to intense scrutiny and speculation surrounding his involvement. In a surprising turn of events, O.J. Simpson was acquitted of all charges in the criminal trial, leaving many shocked and divided opinions on the verdict. However, justice was not entirely elusive, as he was later found liable for both deaths in a civil lawsuit filed by the victim's families in 1997.